So today in the program, we're really pleased to welcome from South Shore Health, Dr. Todd Kerensky. Doctor is the Director of Addiction Medicine Services at South Shore Health. And Julie Paul is joining us as well. She's the Director of Addiction Medicine Services. And Julie is also the Perinatal Behavioral Health Program Director at South Shore Health. So um, Todd, Julie, welcome to both of you. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, it's our pleasure. I wanted to let the community know a little bit more about how the uh, Graken Center for Treatment at South Shore Health uh, is expanding and growing, uh, so much so, in fact, that you have to have a whole new facility right across the street from South Shore Hospital. So, uh, Dr. Kerensky, maybe if I could start with you, if that's all right, and just first of all, tell us a little bit about what the Graken Center is. Sure. So, the Graken Center is provides addiction treatment to members of our community. We have a couple different programs within the center here. We have a bridge program, which is an access point for people who use alcohol or substances to obtain treatment. Um, we are insurance blind, so we take all insurances, and if you do not have insurance, you can still come and you will be cared for. Um, and it is an easy access point for people in the community who, who again, use alcohol or substances. Um, and then I'll let Julie speak to the perinatal um, program that she has. Um, so that is what we're what we're offering here at the at 797 Main Street. The the facility itself is relatively n new. Um, the the treatment at, uh, center itself, right? Not not the actual facility. Is that right? Correct. So the Graken the Graken Center for Treatment started. Um, seeing patients in late October 2019, and we moved to the new facility here across the street from the hospital, as you alluded to, at 797 Main Street in Weymouth. Um, this week, we started seeing patients at the new facility. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. How did the center start in 2019? What was the impetus for that, and, and uh, what was the history of that? So the center started with a generous donation from the Graken family um, to help South Shore Health embark on providing addiction treatment in a formal way to patients suffering from addiction. How important is it to address that issue when somebody comes into the hospital, say, for uh, another issue? Oh, it's extremely paramount. So in addition to the clinic bridge program that I've described, um, we do provide consultation services to patients in the hospital. So if patients get admitted to the hospital for reasons, medical or surgical reasons, we will provide consultation services um, in order to have alcohol and substance use addressed in the hospital, and then patients can come and see us at the bridge program after their hospitalization. Would you say that some of the hospitalizations are the result of substance use addiction? Oh, absolutely. Um, my impetus to get into this field was, in fact, the nature of medical care today is that many hospitalizations are related to directly to alcohol or substance use or long consequences related to such use, including but not limited to liver disease, heart disease, um, amongst other chronic conditions. Lung disease, especially if you include tobacco, um, many hospitalizations to, to hospitals throughout the Commonwealth and in fact the country are, are directly linked to, to substance or alcohol use. Yeah, is this is the Graken Center? Would you say it's a it's a new model, uh, or is this being done elsewhere? Yeah, it's a great question. The Grakens have also been very generous and and started a, a um, addiction treatment or helped to, to to support addiction treatment at Boston Medical Center. Oh, where I did my addiction training. So the model is very much. Um, similar, in fact, taken from um, what is done at Boston Medical Center, where they also have a, a bridge program um, and a consult service. So we're very much modeled after that, although we have some, un you know, obviously unique qualities to this program. Since we're not in a quite as urban of a setting, um, we have, uh, we see slightly different um, uh, substance use here, although really very similar to Boston, actually. I, have you seen um, the pandemic have an impact on people suffering from substance abuse? We certainly have. You know, in the early days when the pandemic was really surging in Massachusetts, um, patients were a little bit more reluctant to come to treatment because they were worried about exposure to 
the novel coronavirus at that time um, through um, masking and social distancing and appropriate uh, hygiene, we have been able to ma uh, maintain open for inpatient, in-person contact with patients throughout the pandemic. Um, the pandemic, of course, has added a lot of um, psychosocial stressors to people, which is um, a major part of what's going on now. So uh, we want to stress that we're here to, we're here, our doors are open. We do offer telemedicine virtual visits for patients that may be reluctant to come in. But um, we want to stress that we are here to provide in-contact care for patients that may feel isolated related to COVID-19. Curious, um, Curious uh, did the Graken family have a, an issue uh, that, that kind of prompted them to say, hey, we want to help out? I think, um, you know, I can't answer that directly. I think that okay. they have always maintained an interest in this area of improving access to, to substance and alcohol treatment. Um, but I, I, I think it would probably be better for them to kind of answer um, related to their, their, if there was a personal situation. I, I'm, I'm unaware, but I think, um, I know that they've maintained a strong interest in this field. Yeah, well, obviously, with a $10 million um, gift, um, it's, it's something they're passionate about, sure. Um, Julie, let's bring you in at this point, if we can. Uh, you're the Director of Perinatal Behavioral Health um, at South Shore Health. What exactly is that? So, as a midwife, I've been a midwife in the community since 2006. And then in 2016, I noticed a lot more in, um, increase in depression, anxiety among pregnant and postpartum and women. A lot of people, there are not a lot of programs for this population in the public. So I wanted to correct that. So I went back, got my psych NP. And then in October of 2018, this program was born. So my program primarily cares for pregnant and postpartum women up to two years um, with mood disorders like depression, anxiety, bipolar, as well as substance use disorders. With the Gregan's Fund, we've been allowed to be expanded. I was just doing two days a week. Now I'm doing five days a week. And my staff increased to a staff of eight from, it was just me when I first started. So we've had some significant growth and we're really excited that the Greykins have allowed us to expand our program and offer more services to more women. And what, would it, what does the treatment actually entail? Is it, is it, is it counseling? Um, is it cognitive therapy? Is it, is it medication? Primarily it's medication management, okay. but with, we've also just got um, health policy grant through the state and we're going to be able to offer additional services such as lactation support peer support and care coordination so that we're not all working in silos meaning the ob's are not working on their own mm. um, we're working in tandem with each other so that the patient is put at the center and there's hopefully less lapses in care and more consistency so the patient gets better care yeah would you say uh, does postpartum depression lead to substance use disorder not necessarily. Okay. I think it can increase it for women that do have a, a substance use disorder. And I think some women with substance use disorders do use a substance to help treat a depression and anxiety. But I don't think, I think the two of them can coexist independently of each other. Yeah. Is there, is there a stigma, do you think, attached to postpartum depression? Is that something that still needs to be overcome? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So many women are afraid to come forward. They don't want to look like bad moms. You know, with social media and everyone always posts the happy posts of them caring for their babies and nobody really posts the reality. Whereas one in seven women suffer from postpartum depression and anxiety. Uh, curious, why is your program kind of integrated with, um, you know, this entire Graken Center? I think Eileen Graken just expressed an interest because she saw the, um, the importance of including women and infants and families in this program. And I had just started my program when they approached Seltzer Hospital. So they also saw that I was trying to add addiction medicine and with the, working closely with Dr. Kerinsky, um, they included me generously in the grant. So I think it's allowed me to work, increase my SHORE program, which is what we call our perinatal substance use program, as well as my mental health side of it, where 80% of my patients are primarily depression, anxiety, and mood disorders. SHORE program, what is, what is that, Julie? Supporting hope, opportunity, empowerment, and resilience. Okay. Um, is now, is, are there group sessions or is this one-on-one -on -one treatment? So now that we're in our um, new space, we will be adding group therapy so that we're doing peer recovery groups. We'll be offering postpartum depression groups, trauma groups. 
So we're really excited to increase that opportunity for our patients in the community. Yeah. Uh, will you be doing outreach to the community? How will folks learn about you? So, so far, um, even without really advertising, I've cared for over 600 families really? with either um, addiction or mental health issues. So I think word of mouth is getting out there, especially where I've been a midwife in the community. So the OBs already kind of know me obstetricians in the OB office community. So I think that's increased their awareness of the program. Um, we've had some local publicity just within the, with the Graken Award and that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, would you say you work in partnership with um, primary care physicians or uh, emergency room doctors uh, to, to kind of collaborate and refer? Yeah, more so with pediatricians, obstetricians, okay. DCF. Um, we've also worked with local therapists as well. Sure. And Dr. Kransky, same question for you. How are folks going to learn about uh, the Graken Center? You know, how does that connection happen? Yeah, we've done a lot of community outreach. And as Julie has pointed out, word of mouth really um, has supported the program. In the year and a half that the Bridge Program has been open, we also, uh, we've treated over 600 patients in the clinic and performed over 4,000 office visits in that year and a half time period. Wow. Um, we do get a fair number of our patients um, coming to the hospital. So we do work quite a bit with our emergency department colleagues and, um, and the hospitalist group at the hospital. So when patients come to our emergency department or hospital, we are often um, involved in the care. And if we're not, then those other doctors are referring those patients to us. Um, we are looking to expand our outreach and make sure that patients know that we exist and know that there are effective treatments, especially for opioid and alcohol use disorder, so we can hopefully bend the curve and save lives, which um, I'm, I'm confident we have done to this point, but I know that there's a lot more um, suffering and addiction addiction out there that um, you know certainly is welcome in our program. Also, is it is it uh, groups groups treatment uh, or is it medication treatment or a little bit of both? We do a little bit of both. We're a medications first program, so we use FDA approved medications to treat uh, substance and alcohol use disorder. We also have behavioral health clinicians that provide uh, wraparound recovery supports, which include cognitive behavioral therapy and um, supporting people through early phases of recovery, which can be quite chaotic for many people. We do provide transportation to and from the clinic for patients that have a lack of transportation. And um, so we really try to provide wraparound services in order to, to meet people where they're at and help them achieve their goals. Um, Dr. Kresge, you mentioned something at the beginning I was curious about. You said it's insurance blind, and I think that's a, a key point. Um, because that can be a, a barrier for a lot of folks, uh, or at least they think it is. How does that work? Yeah, great question. So um, what we do here is we provide treatment to patients regardless of their insurance or ability to pay. The Graken family and their grant has allowed us to provide that amazing service to the community. What we do is we work with the financial counseling services within South Shore Health to help people um, connect with available insurance products and benefits that they may be, that they may be eligible for. Um, but what we want to stress to the community is that um, if you don't have insurance or you're unable to you know, put, pay for services, you don't need to have that as a barrier to reaching out for treatment. We will treat you, there will be no delay, and we will help you um, hopefully find um, insurance products that, that meet your needs. Yeah, I think that yeah. is a key point to stress um, for sure, because we don't want folks uh, to not seek treatment, you know, out of fear of um, financial ruin, um, if you will. Is is mental health counseling also a, a part of this, or do you at least uh, work with folks in the mental health field as well? We do. We have um, a couple different options. We have a, um, one psychiatric nurse practitioner that works within the program, and then we have two behavioral health clinicians um, who have experience doing mental health treatments and providing services, counseling. And then we have um, partnerships with community resources where um, we refer out for um, more intense needs that, that patients may not be able to have met here in the program. Um, so we have partners within the community that we refer patients to and work collaboratively with. Yeah, how about, Julie, how about for you, the same thing? 
We're primarily med management. We do, I do like traumatic birth reviews. I do help people develop birth plans for their births that have been specifically traumatic for them. But through the introduction of groups that we're hopefully going to be doing in June, that's how we're going to address the majority of our group therapy type. But we do have crisis management available for all of our patients in short-term therapy until I can get them into a long-term therapy within the community. But we do have someone within our program who specifically helps our patients connect with a therapist in the community. Okay. You know, for a woman watching who may be experiencing postpartum depression or know someone who is, what is your advice to them? That you're not alone, that there is treatment available and you can feel like yourself. And with the proper treatment, you'll be the best mom that you can be. And Dr. Kransky, same question for you. Somebody who's experiencing substance use or knows someone uh, who is. The biggest thing we do here is keep stigma. So um, we understand that, there, that, that this is a time of incredible uncertainty for some patients and families. We hope that you will reach out. We have um, an enormous amount of resources here within the Graken Center to help you. Um, there are, as I said earlier in the, in the discussion, FDA approved medications that may be appropriate for you and can help you achieve your goals of long-term recovery. We do, as I've said, provide uh, behavioral health clinicians to help patients through this early period of recovery. And we understand what you're going through and we hope that you will find treatment and, and, um, and let us help you. Do you um, have a success story where uh, somebody has uh, come through uh, treatment and, uh, you know, um, appeared on the other side and, and maybe now is working uh, to help somebody else? Oh, absolutely. We, we have many success stories. As I said, we've treated over 600 people, many of which have gone on to um, lead productive lives. Um, however, that is defined by them, whether that be work or family life or um, uh, so many, many success stories. We, have, we do work closely with community organizations that provide peer support and many Patients that we have treated have been interested in entering the peer recovery community. Um, so uh, we work closely with, with patients to help, help them with peer recovery supports as well. Sure. And Julie, I'm sure you have similar experiences with your patients. Oh, yeah. You know, so depression, anxiety, and pregnancy, it, it goes across every stratosphere. So I have people that are homeless up to physicians and state representatives. Mm. And, you know, just helping them so that they can be who they normally want to be at. My goal is to help them feel normal. And I have so many success stories, people crediting this program with saving their lives. Um, I had one young woman who I've been working with for two years. Her aunt actually committed suicide as a result of postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And so she came and she was so scared that that was a similar thing that was going to happen to her. But two years out, she's ready to graduate from the program and she's doing so well, opening up her own business. So we can say the same thing with women with our substance use program that they're well supported and there. We have some really good success stories. So it's a privilege to be able to work with the populations that we work with. That's great. Um, how can folks get more information about the Graken Center and uh, some good uh, points of contact to, to let people know about? They can go on the South Shore Health website or they can call 781-624-5065. They can do self-referrals or they can have their physicians or part or providers um, refer them as well. Okay. Anything else uh, you think we should add right now? I would like to add one thing to add on to what um, Julie said, which is that um, I'd like to remind people that treatment here is, is confidential and they should rest assured that when they enter the program, they will be treated, their confidentiality will be treated with the utmost importance. And um, that has, um, that, are, are taking that extremely seriously has resulted in many people coming to treatment that may have otherwise felt uh, reluctant to do so. And that includes many professionals within the community who, who are dealing with alcohol or substance use. It's a great point. Um, it's something that crosses all socioeconomic, uh, demographic, and geographic areas. It really doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how much money you have, right? Um, I'm sure you see it uh, in all stratas. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for having us and helping us reach the community so that way um, people know that we're here and, and able to help them. Uh, it's our pleasure. We're happy to help. And please, if we can do any more, uh, reach out. Uh, don't hesitate. We'd be happy to be uh, a conduit to the community uh, for both of you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Be well.